This video will show you how to get started with Darkroom Booth software. The first time you run Darkroom Booth after installing it, you're going to be prompted to activate the software with an 18 digit code. And once you do that, you can go ahead and start the software. And in my case, uh, I have a limited license, so it's going to tell me I have 28 days remaining. So I just hit OK, and Darkroom Booth starts up. Uh, the first thing I would do when you go into Darkroom Booth is I would go to the Global Settings area and down here you can see I can deactivate this computer if I want to move the license to another computer I just deactivate this one and then I use the same code on a different computer. The next thing you probably want to do while you're here is go into the printer options and add uh, the printer that you might have. We have some built-in drivers here this list will be updated soon. Um, if your printer is not on this list of built-in then just click on the Windows printer and add that and in this case I might uh, just for testing do a PDF printer and the other thing is you need to tell a darkroom when you're adding a Windows printer what size um, prints you'll allow the printer to accept so in this case I could just do 4 by 6 and then again while you're here go ahead if you're gonna set up uh, an email account this would be the account you're sending from and you might use email either to email directly to the customer or to post to a social sharing site like uh, Facebook or um, one of the other ones. So once you're done here, go back to events and you can see we provided a, a list of events and when you're on an event, if you wanted to, you could just duplicate this event and I could call it something else and that way I can kind of keep that original with all the settings that I could always go back to. Um, we're in the settings main uh, set what kind of output you want in this case it's two by six with two copies so that I actually use a four by six piece of paper you can also set photo email or set uh, the images to be saved um, although darkroom is saving all the images in the photos and prints uh, you can also have it save in another location um, if you wanted to do that um, this also shows what template uh, the output template I'm using um, and again if I click on the choose button um, you'll see we have a variety here and it's uh, pretty easy to edit one of these and then maybe save it as something new or just create a new one from scratch but when you're getting started I, I wouldn't recommend creating a new one from scratch um, just choose one of these and and edit it then you have the controls tab and a lot of these are pretty self-explanatory um, this is just how the, um, the program is going to work. Uh, one thing to notice is if, if you use the escape key to exit, if you put a pin down here, make sure you don't forget the pin because that uh, wouldn't let you exit the booth. Screens. Um, again, this is the booth screen. When you hit start booth, this is what you're going to see. And again, some of these sample events over here will have some different um, screens to them, um, but it's pretty straightforward to um, edit your own if you'd like. Um, again I can click on the edit button um, and starting out again I wouldn't recommend creating one of these from scratch it's just a lot easier to go in and just edit some of the ones that we've provided. Text and timing pretty straightforward this is what you want the booth to say and here's the timing between the events and then live view uh, if you have a camera that supports live view, um, any webcam, and the newer Canon and Nikon SLRs will support live view. You can control some of the settings and you can also test it here to make sure things are working. Once you've got that set up, then you basically hit start booth and you'll be good to go.